Right guys, good to see you. We're gonna learn something really exciting about circles today. Ooh. And I love circles. Circles are everywhere, they're very, very useful shapes. You find them in nature, not just in things that we create. So we're gonna measure some circles today and I wanna discover something really surprising about it. Now, so you're gonna need one of these. We're gonna do some measurement with this string. Okay. And um, this, this frying pan looks like a pretty good circle. So Bill, you wanna hold this up. And there's a nice big circle there nice. on the pan. Oh. Can you measure all the way around and can you take those ends? And now why don't you lay them against this ruler? So what length? It goes all the way up to, yeah, what are you getting? 77. Nicely done, okay, thank you very much. And then with the same pan, can you measure all the way across? So this is what we call the diameter. And what are you getting when you measure across when you put it against the ruler? 24.5. 24 and a half, very nice, okay. So we need another circle. Um, you know what, Maddie? You look roughly circular. <laughs> Billy, do you want to try and measure so, Maddie's yeah, head? Yeah. So be gentle. Okay, all the way around the forehead. That's it. All right, we can use the same rule up. Here we go. What's that length all the way around? Are we getting to? 53. 53? Yeah, 53. Okay, fantastic. So that was around. All right, now to get across, so maybe go over the top. Nicely done. Okay, go all the way. Make sure you get the whole width. So what are you getting? It's about 17. 17, 17. okay. No. Now I want you to grab these calculators of yours, okay? Now, Maddie, you measured these two numbers. What I'd love you to do is to divide them together. And Billy, can you do the same, but for your numbers? 3.1. 3.1, and what about you, Billy? 3.1. Well, 3.1, now hold on a second. We measured these different kinds of circles, different sizes, but we got this same pattern. And this number, 3.1, you could actually take you know, teeny tiny circles like this, or you could take a circle like, say, the equator around the Earth, you're always gonna get this same number. It's kind of cool, cool, right? And it's yeah, surprising cool. as well. For me, this is one of the things I love about mathematics. It kind of shows how everything's interconnected, all these different circles. You can see you've got these circles all kind of nested within each other. Okay. And it's not just, you know, in things that we make. Also in nature, if you have a look at this onion, right? you can see you've got these layers and these are these rings of the onion are also concentric. Oh, and cool. if we measured around, we measured across, we're still gonna get that same connection no matter we, whether we got a big one or a small one, we'd be getting the same ratio. And this number, it's so important. It's actually got some more decimal places after it. We give it a name, we call it pi. Which is a Greek letter. Like, like the food? Well, yeah, kind of, actually. So these concentric circles show us how mathematics really gives us the connections between them. Whether it's... Billy? Billy? Where'd you go? Oh, thanks, you man. What sort of adventure are we going on today? Ah, but Billy, maths with Mr. Wu is an adventure. After all, pure mathematics is the poetry of logical ideas. Welcome, Billy. We are the fun guys. Our presentation is about to commence. Please remain attentive. Hey, fun guys. There's not much room in here, am I right? Many apologies. Extra seating would act as surplus to our regular requirements. Please stand and observe. The presentation begins. For billions of years, we fun guys have been bringing efficiency, balance and order to the earth. We work inside root, soil and stem, opening pathways to nutrition in exchange for carbon. We also install and maintain a communication network that's used to share information about oncoming danger. Whoa, I thought you guys were mainly just good in salads and pies. Yes. Also, pasta and soup. It has come to our attention that this onion patch is overdue for a mycelium network upgrade. We've had several unconfirmed reports of parasitic eelworms in the surrounding soil. Our data shows they may need to activate their natural enzyme defense systems. However, the few network nodes we have managed to install have been misappropriated or vandalized. Billy, we need you to convince these onions to connect. They could be in serious danger. I'm sorry, but they seem pretty happy where they are. Why can't you just zap down there and sell the mini cables yourself? We follow rhizomatic growth patterns, Billy. As such, 
We exist as a non-hierarchical process that binds soil and stem to life through a continual state of becoming. So you're not going to sell them the cables? We have no interest in persuasion, only organic connection. Action is either taken or not taken. And it has become apparent that now is the time for action. Oh! A little help, brah? Um, there are some fun guys who want you to reconnect to this mycelium tube thingy. Apparently there could be some earworms coming your way. Not likely, brah. We're chill. Uh, are you sure? Those fun guys don't know squat, dude. They're always talking about balance and connection. But maybe I don't want to be connected to the grid, man. See how each of my circles is beautiful and distinct? Um, yes. It's very nice. Why would I want to go plug into the tube and zap my circles? Uh, I don't know. Earworms? Let me ask you something, Mr. Fun Guy Patrol. What shape is the planet? Huh? It's circles, dude. Just like me. Look around you. This is a battery. Ah, uh, Tuba Man, if you can hear me, can you please get me out of here? Remember, Billy, mathematics is the poetry of logical ideas. Please! I just really want to get home and make some mushroom pie. Congratulations, Billy. You saved those volatile onions and helped restore the balance. The fun guys aren't really much for victory parties, but as a reward, they gave me the coordinates to find the freshest mushrooms for your pie. And you might like to breathe through your mouth for a bit. Are you okay, Billy? You look like you've been crying. Where am I? We're on a mushroom farm. Welcome. Oh, can this day get any weirder? Farm? How can the plants grow with no sunlight? Actually, Billy, it might surprise you to learn that genetically, mushrooms are more similar to humans than plants. No way. Yes, indeed way. Plants possess chlorophyll and they grow via photosynthesis. But mushrooms break things down for their food, a bit like us. These little guys are eating compost. We keep a roof on the whole environment to make sure that they're nice and warm and safe. So it needs to be dark for them to grow? They prefer dark and cool and, and moist environments, but they can survive in the light too. They're very resilient. In fact, mushrooms were some of the first complex life forms on Earth. Who are you? I'm Stefan, a mushroom enthusiast, and I'm here to help you find the freshest mushrooms for your pie. Ooh, pie. Um, are you human? You could say that. <clears throat> hey, Jess. Wait, are you a mushroom enthusiast too? Actually, I'm a mushroom grower. Oh, Do you want to learn? Yeah. Do you ready to get your hands dirty? Grab some compost. So this is how mushrooms start. Have a good smell. So it's got straw, it's got water. Have another big, big smell. Can you smell the chicken poo? Ooh. Yeah, it's got lots of chicken poo in it as well. So once Maybe. we've made the compost, yep. we get in there and we put the spawn. So spawn's like the seed of mushrooms. Whoa, feels like sand. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? So what we do is we blend that through. It's pretty much like making a cake. So then once the cake's almost ready, we've got to ice it. So we get this peat moss, and the peat moss we put onto the bed and we add water to it. So when we add the water, it helps grow the mycelium through the peat. And then oh, yeah. once that comes through, we get little beautiful little pins. And once the pins start forming, they double in weight overnight. So if you imagine, you've got a little mushroom like this, and the next day it's even bigger, and gets bigger and bigger. And then if you see here, see all the mycelium there, and the mushroom? Yep. Yep, yep it's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Have you ever picked a mushroom before? Nope. Want to give it a go? Yep. 
I'll go this one. You want that one? Twist the mushroom like that and pick it. And you can snap the mushroom open and hear that crunch. Yeah. And have a good smell. What's it smell like? Earthy. Earthy and have a I taste. Like mushroom. And sweet, isn't it? Yeah. Best way to eat them is raw. I didn't know you could eat them raw. You can, you can eat them raw, you could cook them up. That's why they're so great. What about these? Are they the same or are they different? They're the exact same, but this mushroom here has just stayed on the growing bed a bit longer than this one. So we've picked this one as a cup and this one's got picked as a flat. So what mushroom would I use if I wanted to make a pie? You could use any mushroom to make a pie. You know what the best thing to do? Is you blend it. So you can use all types and it makes the flavour even better. These are nice and sweet and these are nice and strong flavoured. And do you know what? They're all hand picked. Then we take the spent compost and we put it back to the earth. It's like everything's connected. Like a big circle. Billy, you've got to stop doing that. Maddie, I get it now. Get what? Everything is interconnected. Everything is everything. Okay? Wait, what's in your hand? Pie.